Hello and welcome to Kingsview Church. We are so excited that you joined us today for our service. My name is Quentin Ray. I'm the family pastor here at Kingsview. And uh, it is my mission to serve and connect and love on the families at Kingsview. And we would love for you to be a part of our family. I would love to get to know you. I would love to meet your family, meet your kiddos, and, and just be a part of your family, be able to serve you. And ultimately, um, we do this because our goal here at Kingsview is to connect people to Jesus Christ. That is our one mission. That is our one goal. Everything that we do, we're striving to connect you to Jesus Christ. And maybe let us know how we can do that. How can we serve you? How can we help you? Maybe you have some questions about you know, what it looks like to move forward in your relationship with Christ. Or maybe you just have questions about what it means to follow Christ. And you know, you've never... You've never accepted Christ as your Savior, or you, you don't even know what we're talking about. And maybe you just have questions, right? Um, and, and we would love to help you. We would love to be a part of your, your journey with Christ and your walk with Christ. And so send us a message. How can we pray for you? Um, how can we be there for your family? And we, we want to do these things because we want to connect you to Jesus Christ. One of the ways that you can be a part of our mission is by giving. Right, you can give in multiple different ways, and, and we would love for you to be a part of our mission by being generous and saying, I believe in what they're doing. I'm going to help further the kingdom by giving the king's, king's view. And the ways that you can do that is to text to give, um, but you can also give online at kingsviewchurch.org. Or you can download our app, Kingsview Church, or Kingsview Free Will Baptist, or FWB Church. If you type that into your app store, you'll find our app. And not only can you give through the app, but you can be able to stay connected with some of the things that we're doing. Um, or you can follow along um, with the sermons with sermon notes, and even save those notes and email them to you so you can have them. You know, Maybe you make a decision and you want to document that and... You want to have that, right? You can do that all in our app. And so take a look at that if you never have. Um, you, might, you might enjoy that. might be able to stay connected a little bit better that way. Um, the other way that you can be a part of our mission is through prayer. We believe that God hears and answers and works through our prayers, right? And so please pray for Kingsview. P please pray that our mission of connecting people to Jesus Christ would um, would grow and that we would meet new people, that more people would come to know Christ, right, and, and be a part of our mission through prayer, right? And it's not, it's not about Kingsview, it's about God's kingdom and His, and His glory and growing His kingdom, right? And so we would love for you to be a part of that through prayer. The other thing you can do is respond. Um, at the end of our service, we would love for you to respond and, and send us a message or comment even, um, what's going on in your life? What is God dealing with? What is God teaching you? And respond to Scripture. With that, we're about to start our service. Um, please stay engaged um, and, and, and comment and let us know how you're doing as we go. Um, we want to keep up with, with how your life is going. So with that, enjoy the service. Still the miracle that I just can't get over my name. i 
Amen. Hey, it's great to see everybody here this morning, uh, whether you're watching online, Facebook, or you're in-house. Uh, hey, I just want to take a minute, and, and we're going to have a, uh, just a quick prayer. Uh, we're going to have a prayer for our country. We're going to have a prayer for our church. Uh, and, and again, it's just a reminder, uh, we have all seen what has been happening in the last week. Uh, and I think as a church, as God's people, it's our expectation to cry out to the Lord and just say, hey, we're here to be used by you. And we know that we need you. So would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much for today. Uh, we just take a minute and pause and, and say, you are our testimony. Because of you, uh, we're able to continue to move forward in the darkest days, as well as when we're in the valleys, but also when we're on the mountains. And so, Lord, for those across our nation, for those that are going to hear this sermon, hear this prayer all throughout the world, we just pray that you bless us. We pray that you heal us. We pray that you restore uh, our country to a place that you want it to be. Lord, I pray that we place our faith in you and you alone. Bless today, and I pray we bring you glory, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Regardless of what's going on in the world, because we have that testimony in Jesus, we can always see what God calls us to do as Christians, to sing about Him, to tell that story that He's worked in our lives. Let's sing it out.
Thank you. You can be seated. Man, it's great. Great to be at church. Great to be together and see people. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to be in uh, Matthew chapter 28. Um, 
you switch me to, there you go. Yeah, thanks. I uh, go back for one for me. Thanks. Uh, I get so excited that I just start hitting buttons. Uh, <clears throat> and the sound booth, or what I call the crowsness up there, they get nervous. When I get on stage, they start getting nervous. Like, oh man, what's about to happen? But we're going to start a new series this week. Uh, it's called A Guide to Evangelism. And, and I really just want to uh, say a few things as we, as we get into this series. Uh, you know, I think uh, when we talk about really what it means to be a Christ follower and what we talk about what it means to live out our faith, one of the most scariest words I believe for believers is that word evangelism evangelism. We begin to wrestle through it, and, and so we're going to spend eight weeks in this series, uh, but it's going to be more, and, and, and again, I, I said it, uh, we, we kind of wrestled through the right language and the right image because I want this to really be a guide for you in learning what it means to have the compass of the Holy Spirit in your life guiding you into the relationships that are deeper and wider for people to know who Jesus is. I mean, it's, that's very, very simple in my opinion. However, I think we sometimes make it very, very complicated. If you have our King's You app, we're working on a few things. In fact, we're working on like some basic God questions or how to actually have a God conversation uh, with someone when they begin to ask questions such, such as why is the Bible real or why, you know, how do I know the Bible is real and why did Jesus die for me and all those things. We're working on that so you can always have a, a, a guide for you. Um, but for today, everything, if you have the app on the sermon notes, everything you see here uh, will be on the screen as well as uh, in your hand. And I want you to take notes today, right? I, I really want you to take notes and pay attention to what God is saying to you. Um, because the, here's, here's the reality. You and I, whether we want to believe it or want, whether we understand it or not, we know lost people. We, we act like we don't. We act like because, and I'm going to use some what I call Christianese, we act like because we're in the Bible belt and because everyone's gone to a revival or everyone's been to a church or everyone, <clears throat> they're, everyone's parents or everyone's grandparents is either a deacon or a Sunday school teacher. It's just the way it is. So we think that we're all grafted in to the faith. But the reality is, unless someone has said, hey, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me, I believe that he was the son of God. I believe he took my sins on the cross. I believe that he went to the grave. I believe he conquered the grave and rose again after three days. I believe he, he revealed himself to his disciples. He then rose into heaven, sits at the right hand of the throne, and is coming back again. That's what a Christian believes. So for so many of us, what we've gotten caught up into when we talk about evangelism is, well, you got to give this up and you got to give this up and you got to do it this way and you got to do it that way. That's called discipleship of how we learn to live out our faith. But you and I know lost people. And what we have ended up doing is to say, because I've sat, I've sat right where you're at in many sermons. For those of you that have forgotten or don't know, my father is a pastor, my grandfather is a pastor, my great-grandfather is a pastor. So I have sat through revivals and prayer meetings and everything else, and, and, and I've sat right where, you're, where you sat and, and feel anxious and nervous and like, oh man, he's going to ask us to go witness, or he's going to go ask us to sit on the street corner, he's going to ask us to, to go door to door, and we're going to have to have that weird moment and hope someone doesn't pull a gun on us or sick their dog on us, which I've had all that happen, Right? That's not what I'm asking you to do today. I'm asking you to have your hearts and your minds open to what God's word says for you. Because, because here's, here's the reality. We, I think we have two excuses that we make. Number one, we ignore our role and our responsibility of what it means to actually live out our faith. We just ignore it. And number two, we say, we say that, you know, hey, everyone I know is a believer. And in fact, we kind of tie that together and say, well, that's not my job. If I just invite someone to church or if I just give them, you know, if I just pray for them or if I just tell them that I believe in them, then that's going to be great. And so I want to I take a minute and lay this big picture out for each of us. This is an image of Oklahoma City. In the Oklahoma City metro area, there's 1.41 million people. 1.41 million people. This is from the latest census from the Oklahoma City metro area. <clears throat> Out of that, 60% claim to be Christ followers, 60%. So that means 40% of people do not have a relationship with the Lord. So 40%, and, I'm just, and I just did 1%. 1% 1 of 1.4 million is 564,000 people. 
That means right now, today, <clears throat> if the Lord came back, all of us in the Thunderdome would realize we'd go up like Mad Max, right? Anyway, uh, so all of us in the Thunderdome would be great, but 40% of people would be lost. They would not be in heaven. 40%, 500, and that's just in the Oklahoma City metro area. Now, 1% of 564,000 is 5,640 people. 5,640 people. I'm asking and expecting for us in 2021 as a church that we reach 50 people in the Oklahoma City metro area for Jesus Christ. 50. Now, if you want to do some quick math, that's, point, that's, that's 0.88%. I'm not even asking us to do 1%, guys. I mean, I, I'm, giving us, I'm giving us a way out. Because I think if you did 1% of 5640, it's 56 people. You're telling me that we don't know 56 people as a church that doesn't know who Jesus Christ is in the Oklahoma City metro area? I know we do. I know we do. But we've gotten to a place that we have forgotten what it means to actually live a evangelistic life. This is a view of someone's world. And I want to take a snap picture of your world right now. In your heart, in your mind, just for me talking by just mere definition of how our minds work, when I began to talk about evangelism, when I began to talk about lost people, you either did two things. Number one, you said, well, am I saved? If I died right now, what would happen? That's the first thing that you begin to ask. Number two, you begin to think of, who do I know that it does not? And here's, here's a catchphrase. Who do I know that does not believe in Jesus Christ? Not who do I know that doesn't go to church. Those are two separate things. Who do I know that does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ? And I want you to write that name down. I want you to think about it. And I want you to write a name. If you're using the notes, if you're online watching, write it down. And I want to pray for that person for you. And I want you to pray for that person. Do you pray with me? Lord, the one person in our hearts and our lives, I, Lord, I, I pray that your spirit speaks to them right now and just begins to prepare their heart. It might be 10 days, it might be 10 months, it might be 10 years before we ever are able to have enough courage or the right timing to be able to talk to that person about how you changed our life and who you really are. So Lord, I just pray that whoever that person is on our hearts, that you prepare us as well that we're strong and courageous, we're bold, but we're sensitive. We're not political, but we're passionate. We're not bullies, but we truly are bridge builders. So Lord, whoever that one person is on our hearts and our minds, Lord, we, we, we just ask that you use us to connect them to your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. In the scripture there at the last of Matthew, what we have, Matthew's gospel, is telling the story about how Jesus truly is the Son of God and truly is the Messiah. And you get to the end and Jesus has already, you know, been betrayed. He's already faced uh, uh, the court system, uh, what you call a kangaroo court system. He's already been crucified. He's already been dead. He raises from the dead and, and he begins to reveal himself to his disciples and um, We've already had, you know, just there's all oh, so much there. But then he gives his last command, if you will, and it's called the Great Commission. And it's interesting if you really look at the statistics on the Great Commission, almost over half of Christians don't understand or don't know what the Great Commission is. They actually confuse the Great Commission with the Great Commandment to love one another with all your heart, soul, and mind. We just, and I think it has to do with us as a church and as Christians that we have not taught people, we've not trained people about what it means to just live out your faith. And this is what it says starting in verse 16 of Matthew 28. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. You can also look at that passage in, in, in Mark and in Luke and, and even in John, and, but really in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 uh, where Jesus says, but the, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, the authority has been given to you, and you, you know, to reach uh, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, and Ju Judea. You can read this passage. I mean, they record it. But there's something interesting for me that when I begin to really look through this, and especially in Mark chapter 16, verse 14, it says that Jesus actually rebuked the disciples for their hardened heart and their lack of faith. Now, why am I want to highlight that? Because I believe sometimes we don't actually tell someone about God is because we ourselves doubt. The disciples doubt it. Like, we doubt if life change is going to happen. And we doubt like this. Oh, man, they're so wrapped up in this. And, man, they're such jerks. And, man, you know, this and this. They'll never give their life to the Lord. They'll never come to Jesus. They'll never come. And they don't want to have anything to do with God. They're just filled with bitterness and hate. So we give up on them. And I'm so thankful no one gave up on me. I'm so thankful no one gave up on me because I was like that. I, w I was that person. And what, what doubt does is that, that it drives division inside of our faith. And I think that's why Jesus rebuked them and said, if you're really going to believe in me, you can't fully be all in unless you're all in. You're like, you, count the cost, take up your cross Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. You're going to have arguments with your, I mean, go back and really read some of Jesus' words. You're going to have arguments with your mother and your father. And there's going to be people that say you should take up the sword. And you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. But when you doubt my authority, it causes division in your faith. We wrestle with, well, I, I'm, I'm a citizen of this world, but I'm also a citizen of heaven. And there's that pull and tug in each of our lives. But when you doubt that life change is truly possible, you won't be able to see that life change is truly possible. See, the first thing the disciples did was they doubted. So where are you doubting right now in your own life, in your own faith, that you think that God can heal or that you think that, that, that the Spirit is working in your life? Where is it that you're doubting? Is it restoration? Is it big dreams? Is it career moves? Now let's take that into the person that you thought about and where are you doubting that they are actually going to be able to give their life to the Lord? The second thing is, is that we forget, not only do we doubt, but Jesus says that he had all authority in heaven and on earth. Now, <clears throat> for those of you that know me, I do not like that word authority. It bothers me deep inside. I fought against authority. I, uh, I was a rebel, truly without a cause. But at some point, all of us face that moment that we recognize we're just one small speck. And I can't fight against the system. I can't fight against the authorities. But then I take that to the bigger picture. And even though I'm one small speck in the world and in, in, in eternity, God so loved me that he sent his son to die for me. And that authority that he has is in heaven. But notice that he tells the disciples is also on earth. And that authority is pushing us and telling us and encouraging us that you can when you think you can't. You see, the authority is a command from Jesus, not a mild suggestion. I love that phrase. See, we think the Great Commission, if you remember when I started talking about discipleship and our discipleship pathway, I, I, I preached a sermon on this, and I've changed it a little bit. I've changed it a lot, actually. But I preached a sermon on, is it the great commission or the great omission to make disciples? And so we've, traded, we've created the same thing in that word go. We've made that a mild suggestion because we go back to, well, how and why am I supposed to do this? And I'm not, quote, unquote, trained for this. And this isn't my career path. And I'm not a pastor. Or I'm not on stage. Or I'm not this. Or I'm not that. And everyone I know is a believer. And so we make all these excuses and we think that it's just a mild suggestion. 
And the truth is that it's more than a mild suggestion. It's a life change thing that we forget that is life or death. It's life or death. In fact, when you look at the word go in Greek, what it means is to lead, to carry over, or to transfer. And so what Jesus did in the Great Commission is not only did, like, so what we tend to do is we look at those four words, like go, make, baptize, teach, disciples, five words. My mind's running fast, right? So we look at those words and we try to dissect them all. But the reality is that Jesus said, Jesus just said, go. And when he said go, because he had already said all authority has been given to me in heaven, but also on earth, I'm now transferring that, that, that power, that authority, authority over to you. So just go. And he's transferring that authority into us so that when we see people, that we're able to actually give them life. I can't tell you how many times that someone has come and talked to me or called me or texted me and they want to know this problem and they want to know that problem and how do I do this and I always start it by saying this and I know some of y'all in this room have heard that and some of y'all have watched and have heard what I'm about to say and I can give you all the advice in the world but it's going to come from the reality and the perspective of who God is. And so if you want to hear what I have to say, just know it's coming from a biblical perspective. It's coming from how God creates life change and how God wants to restore you and how God wants to change your life. I'm not going to give you my uh, Ryan Giles, Oprah Ellen talk. <laughs> I'm going to give you what Jesus has laid on my heart. You see, that is what all of us are called to do. But why? Because he's given us all authority. The authority that Jesus had we have. And I want that to sit there for a minute. Jesus said that when he leaves, and he has to leave, that he's going to send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when you say, when you become a believer, the Holy Spirit resides in you. The power, the, the, the dynamite, right? The, the authority is all in us. And that's what we talk about when we're on fire and we see it, everyone's so excited. But then when it comes to tell someone about what Jesus really did in our life and how Jesus really changed our life, we go from this full-blown person on fire to all of a sudden we take a step back and we begin to be fearful. It's, it's nothing to be fearful about. It's just about opening our hearts and our minds to tell the story. It's amazing to me, if I asked you, what is your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie? You're already thinking of it right now. You could tell me story, you could quote lines from that story. You could tell me the ups and downs, you can tell me when you cried, you could tell me when you laughed. You could tell me, I feel like an old man is about to quote a dinosaur now, but you could tell me what movie theater you were sitting in. You could tell me what it smelled like. You could tell me how many times you've seen your favorite movie. You could tell me about if you use your favorite movie as a barometer when you have friends or future spouses. Like if they don't like Star Wars, man, they ain't making the cut. Except Jaja Jar Binks. But you can tell me all that. So why can't we tell someone the story of Jesus Christ? It is the greatest story. I mean, there's a movie, there's song, there's the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's about creation. It's about failure. It's about a savior. And it's about us living with him, worshiping forever. Which is my third point. We doubt the authority that's been given to us. Jesus tells us the authority we have. But my favorite thing about it, and y'all hear me quote this and say this a lot, but Jesus says, I'll never leave you. Did you I mean, did you, did you read that? I mean, that's the last thing he says. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Semicolon. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I don't know about you, but that gives me so much confidence to know that on my darkest days, I'm never alone. It gives me so much confidence that when I am in <clears throat> the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus is right there saying, man, I've got you. 
When I make the worst mistakes in the world and when I make mistakes and I'm beating myself up and I'm hearing the whispers of shame and guilt and you're no good and why'd you do this? You should know better. I hear Jesus' voice in my heart because all authority has been given to me and I hear him saying, man, yeah, you jacked that up, but man, I'm still with you. Now let's transfer that over to the courage and the bravery that he tells us to go. I'm not telling you to go knock on doors. I'm not telling you to stand on the street corner and hold a sign up. I'm not telling you to do anything except what the authority of God has told you to do. Go. And that's, that's for you. Everybody's story, where they're going to go is different. So many times through the years, we've heard stories like this. And then we're like, okay, who's going to answer the call to preach? And who's going to go into the mission field? And that's just one little story piece of it. I hate to tell y'all here right now and if you're watching, but the mission field is right here right now. We have the most demographic diverse in America, in the United States, in Oklahoma than we've ever had. We're, people are watching this all over the world. When we had our podcast, there were people watching, there's no lie, in Transylvania. I thought it was a joke. We had to actually get a map and like, this, this, vampires are listening to us, right? We had people in Russia. We had people in China listening to our podcast all over the world. We are in the most evangelistic time that we've ever been in, and we're shying away from it. We had a world pandemic that people are struggling to understand why and how. And Jesus is saying, stop doubting all authority that's been given to me. I'm given to you. Now just go tell the story because I'm with you always. I'm with you. And we forget that. Can I be honest? I forget that. I get so caught up in everything that I have to do, and I know you're the same, that we get so caught up in everything that we have to do that we miss out on looking for the opportunity to step into someone's life when they begin to open up to us. In 1998, there was a uh, <clears throat> study done by the Barna Group and the Barna Group did a study on this question. Every Christian has a responsibility to share their faith. In 1993, nine out, of ten, nine out of ten Christians who shared their faith agreed. That was 89% of Christians out of that study. And I looked at the statistics, and it was about a 1,300 pool that they had, 1,300 people from all walks of life that they did, that they said, believers and unbelievers. So this was in 2018. Today, just two-thirds say no. Christian doesn't have a responsibility to, to share their faith. It's a 25-point drop. Can you imagine what it is today? I mean, seriously, can you really think about what, it, what that would look like today? That if we asked and polled 1,300 people, believers and unbelievers, would they say that a Christian's responsibility is to share their faith? Or would they just say, no, it's too judgmental? Or would they say, no, 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 you're coming into my, like, like, that's good for you, but that's not good for me. Or would we be so scared to share our faith that we would be canceled out in that whole cancel culture? I mean, I can't, I can't answer that for you. But what I can answer is that we're expected. That's what Jesus said, Go. And some of us are probably feeling the conviction of the doubt. But we also hopefully are encouraged that he's with us always. It's the same picture, same, same image. So tomorrow, when you go to work, when you stop at your local 7-Eleven or whatever coffee addiction place you have, fruit juice, whatever, Remember, Jesus said, go. He said, don't doubt. I'm with you. And so when you get that feeling in your stomach that you just need to tell somebody or ask somebody, man, how are you doing? Maybe you're bold enough in your faith and you're mature enough in your faith to ask this question, you know, do you know who Jesus is? And then if they say, no, I don't, man, get ready. Get ready. 
I, you know, I've got so many random stories, and I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell this story again. I didn't know if I'd tell this story, but I'm going to tell it. We were in New York City, and we had gone and met some people, and uh, we were, went to the uh, museum and went to a <clears throat> local burger place there, and, uh, you know, it was, you know, my, my senses were heightened, and, and I just, man, I, I love this. I love cities. I just, I just enjoy cities. And we're sitting there eating, and a group of students came in. And man, I just felt the Spirit say, hey, pay attention. Just pay attention. So I stopped, and I watched, and I looked. And in a sea of people, my eyes caught this one young girl sitting at the end with all of her friends. There's about seven or eight of them sitting at the end of all. They all got their food, and she just sat there. Kind of tried to not make eye contact with anyone, put her hoodie up had her headphones in, her iPods, AirPods, began to just kind of zone out. And I felt the Lord say, go pay, go pay for her meal. So I went, and this place was packed, man. So I'm asking for the manager. I didn't want to stand in line. The manager comes out. He's all heightened, and he's like, sir, what's going on? I mean, like, they were just like, they were in the weeds. If you're from the restaurant, it, like, they were, they were crashing and burning at that moment. I just said, hey, man, I know this is weird. I don't want to stand in line, but can I just, there, there's someone down there that I feel that they didn't get their meal. And he's like, why didn't they get their meal? But I'm like, look, I don't know this person. I just want to be generous and I just want to pay for the, I, just a number one, whatever that is, just a number one, get it to him. And he stopped. He said, man, people don't do that. I said, man, I'm, just, I'm a Christian. I just feel like this person needs a meal. He said, we'll do it better. They got her two or three of them. They brought it down. I happened to just stand there. I wanted to stand there to make sure. And sure enough, they bring it to her. The whole table's looking around. She takes her hoodie off. She takes it by and she just smiles. Now, I don't know. I, I'll never know her story. I'll never know her story. But that's what it means about having the authority of God in your life and going just a small little thing to say that, you know, you va you're valuable. I have random stories like that all the time, but can I be honest with you? I think you do too. But you don't look at them from the aspect that God is opening up someone's heart in reality to receive love and to receive compassion like they've never known before because that's who God is. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus said, I did not come into the world, John 3, 17. I did not come into the world to condemn the world but that the world through me might have life. Do you have life this morning? I'm gonna walk you through something that's very simple. You might not know if you're a Christian. And it's the same if you're watching online. You might not know if you've ever accepted Jesus Christ. Do you believe that he is the son of God? Do you believe that he took your place on the cross and died for your sin? Do you believe that he conquered and rose from the grave? And do you believe that he rose and went back to heaven and sits at the right hand of the throne where all authority is his and that one day he will be coming again to gather up his followers, gather up his Christians, and that we'll be worshiping him forever in paradise? Do you know that? If you don't, I'd love to talk to you. If you do, I just told you how to tell the story. I hope I encouraged you this morning and not cast you down. Would you pray with me? Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for the story of the gospel, and that's what we say. We say gospel, and that means good news. It means sharing the story. And so, Lord, I pray the one person in 2021, the one person that's on our hearts, that you get us closer to being able to tell the story about what it means to have faith and what it means to live out a Christian life. Lord, I pray that all the barriers that are going to come up, that you cast them down. I pray all the doubts that we throw them aside and we just listen to your spirit. Lord, I pray for the evangelistic moments that we're able just to buy a hamburger for somebody that leads into people asking questions. Lord, I pray that you use us in such a way that we begin to really see the New Testament play out in our lives. 
at this church. Lord, I pray for the 50 people that we don't even know who are going to end up coming to know you. Whether they're in this church or not, it doesn't matter to me, Lord. It's about expanding your kingdom and your territory. It's about seeing dead men and women come to life. And so, Lord, I pray you use this plot of ground to make that happen. I pray you use us to be a part of what you're doing and to be involved in where you're at. Lord, you are so good to us. And I pray that we acknowledge that. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? Every, every week we have a time of response. Every week we have a, a moment that we're able to respond and just say, hey, you know, what's on your heart? So you can do that a few ways. One, there's a connection card in the back. You can take that and say, here's the decision I made. Here's what I'm doing. You can come forward and pray and someone will pray with you. You can wait for me in the back and I'll talk to you. You can call me later in the week. You can pray where you're at. But more than anything, more than anything, it's about saying, I'm leaving here different. I'm leaving here motivated. I'm leaving here with the words, go. So uh, respond as you see fit. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now, I'm laying it down, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace, I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again.
service and being a part of Kingsview Church online and staying engaged and um, but also for your generosity and we know those of you that give uh, we want to thank say thank you um, it means a lot to us and and know that again you're furthering the kingdom of God and connecting people to Jesus Christ by being a part of our mission through prayer through giving and through responding and that's what we ask you to do in this time, is to respond to what God has put on your heart. God speaks to us through Scripture, through time of worship and time of listening to the pastor preach on Scripture. and He moves in our hearts, and we just want you to respond to that. In whatever way that is, when you, if you need to send us a message or ask for prayer, or maybe you, God put somebody on your heart to talk to and, and ask something, or... You know, maybe just encourage or talk to them about Jesus. Right, we ask that whatever it is that you would respond. And uh, again, we want to be a part of your family. We want to love on your family. So if we can do anything for you, let us know how. And until next week, we're going to be praying for you. And we will see you again next Sunday.